And that's what drives cops mad because cops understand that everybody's got an asshole. All you got to do is look for it, and it, it can drive them nuts. It, it can, you know. It, it's part of seeing the dark side of things. That's why you were standing there scowling uh, when they were <laughs> taking my, my hair because she just spent the night with a dead body. Okay, and I saw the uh, crime scene guy. He had uh, Dalton Forest mud on his knees and on the toes of his boots. And that meant he had been down on his knees in the in the mud in front of a dead body that used to be a young girl. And, and I imagine so did you. You spent the night with a dead body. And I think I'd be scowling too. I was really scowling. <laughs> yeah, you people, were. You a lot of people accused me of that. A lot of people accuse me of that. And when I'm actually not, I'm, I'm, I guess my face is naturally frowns or whatever but he's anyway. hard ass. hey you're authorized to because you know michael moore the guy that filmmaker that, mm -hmm. you know he uh has referred to americans as grinning idiots and it, no, no truer words were ever spoken mm -hmm. you know uh, especially since 1996 they all had the teeth whitening you know prior to 1996 if you would go to a dentist the dentist would be wearing a lab coat that white right there right if you went to a dentist and said uh doc I want you to make my teeth as white as your lab coat there. The doc would say, well, I'll do it, but don't tell anyone it was me that did it. Because it looks so unnatural. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, everybody's that way. They're grinning fucking idiots. I call it a dental display is what I call it. It's like you, uh, chimpanzees and other apes, they do a genital display. You ever see a chimpanzee in a zoo look like that? That's a genital display. Well, they do a dental human do a dental display. That's why I love my teeth. These are both artistic, philosophical statements and they're practical too. If someone is fucking with me, I go, you're pretty. <laughs> it scares the shit out of any damn mm -hmm. but they know I'm for fucking real. I ain't no <laughs> yuppie. You see, no I, poser. I, I, I ain't posing, bitch. And these are my, I got my fighting teeth in, bitch. <laughs> well, Can I help you? How you gonna help me? Do I look like I need some help? <laughs> You're too ugly to help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bug is so basically, <laughs> basically on our timeline, you basically are telling me that you committed no crimes Nine. between ninety-seven Nine. or ninety-five. Ninety-five. Ninety-five and, and, and the present. And so, and so when I started, whenever, none, whenever you, whenever none. I didn't, I didn't get a ticket. Did, the well, reason I didn't get a ticket is because I didn't break the law. Okay. So, you, so you kept a legitimate job in Tabor's business? The, yeah, and I did five years probation from 95 to 2000. Right. Okay. And the only things I did unlawful was smoke marijuana right. from morning to night, all I could get. I never dealt it. Right. I just smoked it. And I didn't follow my income tax. A lot of people said you were an avid marijuana user, and I used to work narcotics. And morning to night. And, and I, 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 looked in your, I looked in your van, and there's no evidence of that. I had run out two days before. Well, let me ask you this: you 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 had the you had the Mazda pickup truck mm -hmm. at that until uh, uh, until what time? Mazda pickup truck until two thousand. Until two thousand, at which time you got the eighty six or eighty? Uh, 96, 96, ninety six. Ninety six. Ninety six. Ninety six. What? Astro. Astro. Lane. And then I got this current Astro two thousand and one in uh, two thousand five. 2005. Okay. And you didn't have any vehicles in between that time? The reason I'm asking this is, you know, everybody's came out of the woodwork and they're, you know, I saw him in such and such time, he was driving a, a Chevrolet truck or he was driving no. this. You never drove a Chevrolet truck? No. Never did? Never. Okay. Never drove any other colored van than, than that white van? Never. Okay. The Mazda was black. The Mazda was, was black. A, it was a V2200 with a gray camper on it. Camper shell on it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. What happened to it? Or did it was abandoned in the parking lot of Motel 6 on uh, Oak Brook Parkway in uh, Gwinnett. Why Oak Brook Parkway? Park? It uh, couldn't pass the emissions and I hadn't had a valid tag on it for a year. I drove it all over with an invalid tag on it. So it was expired and what I did is I had a trailer hook up, the electrical hook up, and I had it artistically made so it looked like the plug-in was just hanging down over the decal of the year, but it was actually affixed to it by wire, but it looked like, I even had it artistically, so it just looked like it was dangling, but it wasn't, it was affixed by exactly wire. Exactly affixed to it. By wire, yeah, they covered it, and I just, I drove that for a year with expired tags, and if 
and if I see a police officer behind me, I'd, if I if I could pull into somewhere I, uh, I, without, you know. Police officers got ASP as to when someone's avoiding them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, if, if they see you pull into someone, they know that you're avoiding them, but so I was cognizant from that. They're, right. You know, cops are dumb. They're, so you know, they don't have to be brain surgeons, but, uh, you know, they're not dumb either. They, they're professional. Well, let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I know that you're an avid gun lover also. Mm -hmm. um, you're pretty proficient with a firearm. Yeah. All right. You well, saw my records. No, no, the FBI's got my Army file. Do you have my FBI mm -hmm. file? No. We oh, if you, got me, if you got my Army file, you would see that I have orders cut, uh -huh. certifying me as an expert on the rifle, the auto rifle, the pistol, the machine gun, and the bayonet. What's your, what's your weapon of choice? Do you, I mean, do you have one? And I'm, purely psychological standpoint, do you have one? According to the mission. According to the mission. Uh, what do you mean? I mean, listen, if you're, you know, a, a good weapon to have is the uh, North American Arms Mini Revolver, five shot, uh, 22 Magnum, stainless steel. Stainless steel is the only way to go, man. Especially you don't, the woods there, I mean. If you don't have stainless steel, you got to haul the thing and then you carry it in your pocket, you get a haul out. It's crazy. Stainless steel is the only thing to have. Right. And that thing you can just, just hide, but yet it's extremely lethal. It puts out generally about 300 foot pounds of energy. It's right in the 38 special range. It's as powerful as a 38 special. Mm -hmm. And in other words, enough to do the job. The, all, all of your small guns generally, anything under that is not powerful enough, and that includes your 32 auto, your 25 auto. Uh, 25 auto, as opposed to 300 foot pounds for a, 25 ma a 22 mag, well, 25 auto develops all of 62 foot pounds. You can take it, and I've done it, you can take a 25 auto, put it right up against the laminated automotive glass, laminated glass, bam, shoot right into it, and it'll catch the bullet. It won't even go through it. Yeah, okay. 25 times. But of course, the 25 probably kills more people yeah, than any other thing. Right. Because African Americans get them for nothing. Right. Yeah. And, and, and if it hits you in the heart, I know a girl who, whose father carried a 25 auto. As he was getting out of the car, it fell and hit the curb and discharged and hit him in the, the heart and killed him. So, right. but nevertheless, it's not enough to do the job. Right. The 38 special is the minimum power you have in a handgun. Uh, but, but of course, the problem with the, the, that is that for actual gun fighting, its rate of fire is, is not what you need because to, to reload the thing, you got to take the cylinder out, get the, the bullet. It doesn't have an ejector on it. You got to, you know, and knock them out with the, the cylinder rod. And then, you know, we're pretty low. Now, I practice doing that, and, and, and I can do it in the dark, okay? Yeah, she always had to practice right. reloading in the dark. But it's no good for gunfighting, no. Uh, if you're gunfighting, of course, your Glock 17 would, you know, be it. Uh, with a, with, uh, I got, a, I got, I, well, I'm, I qualified it. Uh, our qualified I mean, expert on the on the on the pistol, which was the the forty five auger. No, nineteen eleven. Yeah, I figured you'd be a forty five man myself. But. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, uh, it's, it's just again the firepower of the Glock, the seventeen rounds, and the forty five is seven rounds. You see, but no, the, the uh, police officers are coming to the conclusion that nine millimeters aren't powerful enough. So you see them go to the forty caliber. Yeah. And uh, and 45 that nines aren't enough. So you don't like nines or uh, it, the, the the magazine capacity is fabulous. Yeah, wait, yeah, fabulous. Yeah. fabulous. How about a 40. Uh, Never mess with. I, I don't I don't even know the ballistics of the 40 actually. Glock. Uh, Glock but, scares me sometimes. I mean, I'm not really a Glock man. I, no, I was no. always a. I've never used one, but just based on its reputation and the magazine capacity of 17 mm -hmm. rounds. Let me tell you, man, if you're good with that and you have the thing uh, at the gun, if you know where the gun is shooting, uh, let me put it that way, uh, kick ass on that. I mean, I don't use, my, my, my firing uh, position with a pistol, if I'm, if I'm gun fighting, and like, there's the guy and I'm, you know, we're going to gun fight, is go down, go down like that, and I've done this with a 45, bam, bam, bam. You get, with no hearing protection either. Right. And see, not only do you have a stable base, but you have a very small target. Right. And as a matter of fact, I'm better kneeling than I am prone right. with, with a 40. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, in the Army at that time, in the 60s, we did not use any other standing offhand position 
with, with, with one handed. Hand, with a one handed grip. It's a dualist position in that you're turning your body sideways and you're presenting what less, left target. less of a target. Mm -hmm. And also you have your, your a little more protecting you. You got your you got your lung protecting your heart. In other words, yeah, we would we would do it this way, right? And uh, I never saw the two-handed stance used in, until the, the late 70s on the, the cop shows and everything. I think it's kind of stupid, really, yeah. in, in a way. I actually do. Um, uh, although, it, it, for coming around corners, it, it, it you know, it maybe, maybe, you know, maybe you can get on point right. just a little bit quicker, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, but I, I just don't like plastic guns. I just yeah. always prefer something to say. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. What um? What else we need? Your your thing with Tabor is kind of like you were talking about. It it's sunk just in over time. It or? sunk in over time. The Tabor half of his sales are delayed sales or go back. T Tabor can't close. We're talking even at his giveaway cheap price. I take it that was his responsibility as far as you to acquired sales. Yeah, you yeah took the lead. He he went and, and sold them. Even at Tabor's giveaway prices, uh, a siding job is over ten thousand dollars. Okay, even even at a giveaway price, uh, still a lot of money. And even if it's a giveaway price, if it's ten thousand dollars, what are you going to say if a guy comes and presents you with a ten thousand dollar? You're going to say, "I'll think about it." Of course, it's rare that the customer is so committed that you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, give it to me. You know, yeah. right, right. He's going to say, okay, even if he's got bits from other companies that are considerably higher, he'll say, I'll think about it because he wants to figure out what's wrong with it. Right. In other words, you can't give it away unless you sell it. You can't. You can't. And, and what do I mean by sell it? Inducing urgency. So, sure. yeah, this is what my sales are with the way I approach siding. I lie to the customer, but I never lie about things that materially affect the terms and conditions of the job. You said the what I lie about is only one thing, and that is to get them to uh, urgency to get them to buy from me now. And how do I lie? There's a million lies. Oh, you know something, John? For the fifth year in a row from the James Hardy Corporation, he won the Golden Hammer Award. Yeah, and every quarter he's in the winner circle. Also, yeah, this is by post-installation surveys that the James Hardy Corporation will send you. They'll send you one after we do your job, and it's based on customer satisfaction. And it's a way to think of how many jobs you do versus your percentile of customer satisfaction. And John, again, got the Golden Hammer Award. Yeah, he's going for a cruise this July on a 20-passenger luxury yacht Curtis in the Aegean Sea over there, courtesy of, last year they sent him to Hawaii. Well, at any rate, when you win the Golden Hammer Award, you get an allocation of 10,000 square feet of siding to help you with your business, and at the same time, increase the market share and the market penetration in any given subdivision of James Hardy products. And guess what? Your subdivision qualifies. So, right now, we have that allocation, and we're going to be able to offer you, I guarantee you, I promise you this, the best price you'll ever see, which is true. That's, that part is true. So you see, that's all lies. That's all bullshit. But it doesn't materially affect the terms and conditions of the job or anything else. It's simply to get them to buy from me now. You see? Mm -hmm. It could be as simple as something like business is real slow, which half the time is, is not untrue. <laughs> business is real slow. Every time we get a job in this particular subdivision, which is true, we've done 22 jobs in this subdivision, every time we get a job in this subdivision, we got a real good chance of getting another job from one of your neighbors right off that sign we're going to put in your yard. If you'll let us keep it there for 30 days, please, after we finish the job. we got a real good chance of getting another job in this subdivision because our work is all over. If people want to understand what kind of work we do, there's plenty of examples of it right outside their door. We may have a job across the street from you. You know, it takes 10,000 jobs. And so for that reason, work is slow. Well, rather than send the crews home, I'd rather them be busy putting siding on your house and just earning their paycheck and, and, and taking care of the material. So yeah, I'm going to give you 
a signing job. You're going to give it to me? Oh, that's right. I'm going to give it. I've got to, I've got to pay my crews. And I should tell you, they're the highest paid in the industry. And you will be the beneficiary of their craftsmanship. And of course, I've got to cover my materials. I don't go steal it. But otherwise, I'm going to give you the job. And the reason I am is we've done 22 homes in this subdivision. This will be the 23rd one. When we're doing your home and your neighbors see your brand new house, then see how good it looks and everyone driving by and seeing the crews there and the work going in and our signs in front, there's a good chance we'll get a job right off of that job. You said, well, it's true. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's true, but you know, it, so it's a, it's a blend, but the, but the only reason I'm lying to them is, is not to cheat them or to screw them, is to overcome human procrastination. That's all. So it's just to induce urgency.